This episode is brought to you by Wear Buff, your go-to for Buffalo-inspired apparel. Get your hands on stylish t-shirts, hoodies, and more at wearbuff.com. That's W-E-A-R-B-U-F dot com. And make sure you use the promo code TWB at checkout for 10% off your first order. Stay Buffalo proud with Wear Buff. The Buffalo Bills start the season with a win, taking down the Arizona Cardinals with a score of 34 to 28 this week on the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. And now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your host, Justin Godford. Bills Mafia, welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show on the Buffalo Fan Base Podcast Network. My name is Justin. I will be your host today, and the Bills are off. Start the season 1-0 against the Cardinals. Some highs in this game, some lows, some weirdness, but most important thing, when we're looking back in January, I'm not really going to remember all the details of this game. I will remember that we have a one in the win column for this one. Um, But before we dive into the game, um, just a couple like housekeeping notes. Um, want to thank all of the fans of the show, everybody that's subscribed. We did hit a pretty big milestone for us. Uh, we hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube and just want to say how much that means to me that you're all out there listening, supporting the show. Just want to thank you. Say, I appreciate it. Shout out to my wife, Leanne, all the support that she's given me as I kind of journeyed through, you know, doing the show, putting it on weekly, the times that I, you know, we weren't having much success and I wanted to hang it up and getting me to keep going through the craziness of our lives. And also, you know, amongst all the other people that I could thank for where we're at right now, special shout out to our producer, Jake. I I can't really understate this or overstate this, I don't know. This show would not be possible without Jake. I get on the microphone and I talk about the Bills, which is something I love doing anyways. I am absolutely terrible with technology. I would never figure out how to record this content and get it out to you. Jake does amazing things with our social medias, with the website, with the production of this podcast. So shout out to Jake. Couldn't do it without you, buddy. Let's get into the game. And there's a lot of things that I struggle with in this game. But ultimately where I land, you know, sleeping on it, whatnot. I think this was like almost the perfect game to start the season with. Most importantly, you come away with the win. But there's a lot of things that saw in this game that are kind of promising going forward. And and this was the type of win where the Bills let it be much closer than it really should have been and, you know, make you stressed out the whole game <laughs> when it seemingly could have been easier. And I'm looking at plays like, you know, the Josh Allen fumble, you know, in the red zone, looking to get points on the board and you turn the ball over. Looking at the Osiris Torrance face masking penalty that wipes a touchdown off the board, the kickoff return for a touchdown, the Tyler Bass kick out of bounds, you know, with with the game in the balance, giving the Cardinals the ball on the 40 yard line. There was a lot of learning moments, a lot of coaching moments, and those are always more fun when. They come with the caveat of a win. So I, I think there was a lot of a lot of room to clean things up. And this game could have been kind of cruise control. I mean, honestly, for as bad as the first half was, the the Bills, you know, come out in the second half flying all over the place and pretty quickly, you know, the the defense kind of locks in offense is getting on the same page and they kind of took control of the game in the second half. 
So a lot of things to clean up and a lot of things that were were good in this game, honestly. And on the offensive side of the ball, so many new pieces. We're talking all off season about what it's going to look like without Diggs. You know, was that a silly move to get rid of Diggs? We hear all this commentary about everybody's going to eat, but what does that look like? And I I think we saw it on full display. And you kind of figure Kincaid is going to be, you know, the catalyst of this passing game still. You know, everybody's going to eat, but they're still going to be, you know, a favorite target. It's It's like parents saying they don't have a favorite kid type deal. Josh Allen's still going to have his preferred targets, and I kind of figured that would be Kincaid. And in a game where Arizona seemingly wanted to take Kincaid away, he ends up with two targets, one reception for 11 yards. But it wasn't, you know, a defensive strategy where you can take away one guy and the offense will stop moving. We, We truly did see everybody eat. Keon Coleman, four catches on five targets, 51 yards. Khalil Shakir, three for three, 42 yards and a touchdown. James Cook involved with the passing game, three catches for 32 yards. Matt Collins, two catches, 25 yards and a touchdown. Velda Scantling with a big 19-yard grab. Curtis Samuel, two for 15. Ray Davis, one for 14. And... The, the ball is just all over the place. As a defense, it just makes it so much harder to, you know, key in on what you want to stop. Oh, and don't forget Josh Allen running the ball. Nine carries for 39 yards and two touchdowns. One of them jumping over Buda Baker, who is a very good safety, which makes that play all the more impressive. James Cook on the ground, 19 carries for 71 yards. I made a prediction in the offseason that Ray Davis would overtake James Cook for kind of that running back one role. Don't look like it after week one. Uh, I I stand by that prediction, but James Cook looked good week one. He was blasting through holes. He was making people miss, you know, in, in real tight spaces. For a while there, he was averaging something like nine yards a carry. Obviously came back down to earth as the game, you know, wore on here. But a good day from James Cook and kind of didn't see a ton from Ty Johnson or Ray Davis in this game. A total of five five carries between them for 20 yards. So I, I feel like we were able to kind of learn a lot about this offense in this game and what it would look like. And I think it becomes kind of all the more impressive that the Bills were able to kind of get through this adversity in the first game of going down at one point 17 to three. And you have a quarterback with a whole new set of receivers, not very much continuity and very quickly in the first game of the season, it becomes, you know, back to the wall. We got to go start making plays. I will kind of include in here, yes, it's week one. Weird things happen all over the NFL. I don't think the Cardinals are going to be some, you know, powerhouse in the NFC. But you got to beat who's in front of you and... You know, in in a week one, like I said, it it can be really weird. We see the Patriots, who I don't think anybody's really expecting much from this year. Jacoby Brissett is their starter. A couple of rookies waiting in the wings. Just a team that hasn't been very good in in recent history and hasn't really shown much to change that. Um, Taking down the Cincinnati Bengals, who... I think most people would have at least making a playoff run, if not a deep one. So all things considered, you know, if the weird stuff is going to happen in week one, I'm glad to just be able to walk away with a one in the win column and not have the weird stuff happen and start the season with a loss. 
you know, ultimately it's a, it's a long season. You can bounce back from that. You could win, you know, 10, 15 games straight. But when, when us as fans wait all off season to see what this is going to look like, you know, measure our expectations and all that, it's, it's really hard to, to have to stomach a loss the first week of the season. Um, offensively, Shakir, absolute dog. He's going to quickly become one of my favorite players on this team. It It's, it's such a blended skill set for him. And I heard somebody say this a while back and I, I can't remember who it was, but they, they comped him to Steve Smith and seeing that one catch and run where he absorbs the impact and just keeps going down the field. I, I, I think that's a pretty good comparison. He's not going down. He's fighting for yards. He's getting open. He catches every target thrown his way. I think a lot of people, you know, nationally kind of look at the Bills receiving core and hear us talking about expecting big things from Shakir. And, you know, he's not a household name yet. And we saw what he looked like last year down the stretch. And, like, we know why we got excited for it. I think he's going to start putting the rest of the league on notice. And then the the other standout, it has to be Josh Allen here. This was just classic Josh Allen game. You know, putting the T.O. on his back. Offense running through him. He did get a little bit more help in the run game, but I believe he had five pass attempts in the first half, just the way it went with the fumble that he lost, the points being taken off the board. Just the first half was time of possession was just dominated by the Cardinals. And then we see him come back. He accounts for four touchdowns, two of them rushing, You know, what's kind of lost just looking at the stat boxes, you know, some of the second and third and longs they end up in due to penalties, which that's a whole nother thing. Year over year with McDermott being this super disciplined, no-nonsense coach, and we continue to get flagged all over the place. And I get it, the refs are flag happy, but a lot of the stuff that was being called in this game procedural stuff something to clean up as you know again a lot more fun cleaning that up with a win under under the belt but Josh Allen hell of a game for the most overrated player in the league I mean five incompletions on the day 232 yards like I said four touchdowns and what I think is all the more impressive about that is kind of what I've already talked about. You're doing this with guys that you've never really played live game reps with. There wasn't a ton of action in the preseason. There wasn't, you know, players carrying over from last year. It's it's really just Shakir. And to kind of have their backs to the wall and be able to make these plays and talked about the the long one to Velda Scantling. How about the the long pass to Keon Coleman of Allen just having faith in his rookie receiver and giving him that 50-50 ball and him coming down with it, conver- converting a hurt, huge third down there to keep the drive alive. You know, not a... Not, uh, Crazy eye popping stat day for Keon Coleman, but he led the team in targets and receptions and yards. And this is a player that I thought maybe would be kind of brought along a little bit slower and wasn't necessarily expecting, you know, an absolutely monster rookie season from him. And again, it's one game, but encouraging that. You know, when all the dust settles, that he's able to lead the team in all those categories. The defensive side of the ball, I will say, it it kind of looks worse than it was while it also still had some bad to it. The Cardinals putting up 28 points. But I think there's a lot 
of that to do with how out of hand the first half got, and that was with, like I said, two possessions where points should have gone on the board for the Bills. That kind of changes the way the game needs to be played. And instead of getting those points, the ball goes back to Arizona. They're a team that wants to, you know, be able to control the clock, run the ball with their running backs, Kyler Murray, you know, take the easy stuff for Kyler Murray. And whatever game plan they came in with that they wanted to execute, you gave them every opportunity to do that by just not really doing anything on offense in the first half. And it, it, it does sound weird to say because the Bills were moving the ball and kind of shot themselves in the foot. But as the Bills started scoring points and and kind of flipping the script, we saw the defense kind of balance out a little bit. And I, I thought that was encouraging because, I, again, this is a unit that has a ton of new players in the lineup. We saw Taron Johnson go down early. Still kind of waiting for more news on that, but we've already lost Matt Milano for the season. Taron Johnson, arguably the second most valuable player on our defense. He's out for the whole game. You got a mix of Cam Lewis and Jamarcus Ingram coming in. Just not, not very ideal for the first game of the season, but they're able to do enough to get it done. I thought that the defensive line was encouraging and I think it's sometimes hard to see that in a game like this where Murray was able to, you know, kind of get his scrambles. He was able to extend plays and and get the ball down the field. But it's also kind of that type of special quarterback. You know, think about being a defense and having to game plan for Josh Allen. And I'm not saying they're by any means similar players or skill sets, but he does have a skill set that presents problems. And, you know, you want to get after him with your front four and make him make quick decisions and get the ball out of his hands. Well, you start getting too aggressive up the field and he's finding the run lanes. You try to switch it up to just contain him. Well, now he's, you know, making some magic in the pocket. He's extending plays, and it's it's hard to cover NFL receivers for three, four-plus seconds. So I, I think he was an interesting quarterback matchup for week one to kind of get a look at things with the defense. But a couple shout-outs, you know, all reliable, saw some nice plays from Daquan Jones. In particular, he had a, a batted pass, um, stopped them from converting for a first down. Von Miller with some pop. He ends up with a sack in this game. And the most encouraging thing for me there is he may not, he won't ever look like, you know, five, 10 years ago, Pro Bowl. Super Bowl MVP Von Miller. And I think that's fine for this team. I think the the biggest concern was, can we get anything out of him? And to be able to register a sack in the first week and just kind of look like he has some juice still. If we're able to use him in long and late downs and have him affect the passer, I think having him in your pocket as, you know, a, a pass rush specialist I think it could pay dividends this season and we'll see how it all shakes out. We'll see if, you know, it's it's just one game. It's not a trend yet or anything like that. But compared to what I watched from him all last season to what he looked like in week one this year, he looks like he's got the step. He's got the juice still. Greg Rousseau. Boy, do I love Greg Rousseau. And we we just saw the extension announced for uh, Spencer Brown. Really hoping that the Greg Rousseau one comes <laughs> maybe right after this game. I was hoping that we would see that. I was hoping that he would be the first extension handed out. But we get Spencer Brown. I'm cool with that. 
think he showed tremendous development, but if we can keep a healthy Groot on the field, he is shown all kinds of talent. He's was always a great run defender, continues doing that, but week one of the season comes away with three sacks, six tackles, like just a great game from Rousseau. And he, I've been kind of wondering with this team since we brought in Von Miller to be kind of that pass rush closer, the game wrecker when you need it. He goes out with injury, and you're kind of looking at who's going to be that next guy, and it didn't really exist, and maybe Groot can d- develop there. And we've seen him kind of, like, working through foot injuries and all that. It's through one week of the season, I feel pretty good saying that Greg Rousseau m- maybe could be that dude. And if he has the season that I think he's going to have, he is going to be extremely expensive to extend at the end of the season. I would love for them to bet on him right now and get that deal done. I think that we have recent memory of doing, you know, extensions with Knox and Bass that may not have worked out exactly as we wanted, but I don't know. I I think Groot's an absolute stud and, and I would just, I just want to get that done. The linebackers, this one's kind of hard for me. They've both made some plays. Carl Bernard, 10 total tackles leading the team. A lot of those were coming a little bit further down the field than I'd like. But also looking at kind of all things considered, you know, it looks like we we give up, you know, a lot of a lot of yards on the ground. When you mix in Kyler Murray and Connor and Benson to an extent, you know, know, like 130 yards, something like that. And I I know this is never something you can do. All plays matter, blah, blah, blah. But James Connor had one carry that went for 20 yards. Outside of that, he had 15 carries for 30 yards and... You know, that, that's a running back that the Cardinals like to lean on. You held him to two yards a carry. Benson, you know, a highly touted rookie, three carries for 13 yards. So run defense has been something that we've kind of struggled with as a team. They have this propensity to give up big carries that kind of skew the stats. So I, I guess even more so now than ever, you, you can't just take that one run, run off the board because they happen kind of frequently, but when you kind of look at it all together and consider the fact that the whole first half, the Cardinals really had the the room to operate with killing the clock, running the ball, whatever, and they just didn't have success doing it. So a little bit more out of the run defense than I was expecting going in and makes me makes me excited for what this defensive line linebackers this defense has going forward. And the secondary, you know, again, we give up 28 points, so it it feels worse than it actually was. I do have, you know, a touchdown given up there on a kickoff return for for a touchdown, you know, right after the Bills take a two score lead and I'm here we go again, you know. <laughs> the Bills score that, that touchdown to take a two-score lead, and I'm, there's whatever, I think there was like eight minutes left in the game. And I was like, cool, we're kind of in maybe maybe a cruise control territory here, you know, just finish out the game. And immediately after, kickoff return for a touchdown. So frustrating. Uh, but when you look at it that way, you know, 21 points for... Given up by the defense, you know, considering a turnover that we have in our own red zone that was going to lead to points, well, theoretically lead to points, you know, just giving them extra possessions that way. All things considered, Murray looked really good in the first half and then, you know, only ends up with 
21 completions, 162 yards, one touchdown. Bills are able to sack him four times, which is impressive for how mobile he is. And I think it, th- this game just kind of requires some some context when you're looking at the score. Um, again, thinking about how many new players that we have in bigger roles. We talk about Hamlin getting a start out there, Ingram coming in, Cam Lewis playing significant time. You talk about Casey Twohills in the mix, Austin Johnson, just all kinds of new faces again. Oh, yeah, your superstar linebacker has already been lost for most of the season before it even started in Matt Milano. And I, I think there is going to be, it is going to require some, you know, getting on the same page, cleaning some things up. But all things considered, the way the game started versus how it ended, you gave up 270 total yards. You came away with the win. The one thing I will say for for the people out there that aren't fans of McDermott, there was the situation at the end of the game where the Bills are up three. The drive kind of stalls out. They're faced with a fourth and three. They elect to kick a 39-yard field goal to go up six. And you know they get the field goal. They go up six. For anybody out there that's not a huge fan of McDermott, this is the kind of situation where I, I kind of get it. You know, what? what's the difference between... You, you get that field goal, you go up six points. Well, now they, you know, they need a touchdown and they, they can win the game with a walk-off touchdown versus, you know, maybe you miss, maybe you don't take the field goal, maybe you don't get any points and they only need three to take it to overtime. Well... I know really anything can happen in overtime, but I'm I'm just thinking to like the Ravens game against the Chiefs where the would-be touchdown to Isaiah Likely, his toe was on the back boundary line. But, you know, before that play is even decided by the refs, Harbaugh is running onto the field saying, we're going for two. Like, they're going for the jugular. They're going for the win. And... It's just kind of a situation where the Bills were moving the ball well. You have Josh Allen. You know, if you're able to get a touchdown there or even just extend the drive to continue taking clock off, you, you've you pretty much wrapped up that game if you go for it and convert the fourth down. And, and if you don't, maybe you have to take it to overtime. Maybe they get a field goal. And if they get a touchdown, you're still in the same spot. So, I don't know. I I feel like some of the aggressiveness is, you know, banking on the defense still and banking on special teams. And I appreciate him as an aggressive coach. I understand that his background is defense. I think that something that has come up and bit us in some of these really heartbreaking traumatic losses is that he doesn't default to when he wants to be aggressive putting the ball in Josh Allen's hands and you have one of the best players in the NFL if I'm going to be aggressive to try to secure a win it's going in Josh Allen's hands especially in the modern NFL where there's so many weird things that can happen and like how the league the league is set up for offenses to be able to score points and the perfect example of this for me was this real quick PTSD trauma response I had when you know the game's kind of in the balance and Murray tosses one up to the the front corner of the end zone like two yard line and that that ball's almost caught, and honestly, probably pretty easily could have been flagged for pass interference, and it ends up falling to the ground, no harm, no foul. But 
that's the type of thing where no matter how much I believe in our defense, no matter how aggressive I want to be with the defense to win the game, a simple flag coming out there for pass interference, and all of a sudden the Cardinals have the ball on like the two-yard line, first down. They got to move two yards, and you've just lost the game. So, you know, glad it worked out the way it did, but I also like to look at, like, the, you know, we f- we feel good. The Bills won. one and all, And then I think sometimes kind of in in wins, it's harder to be critical of your team, right? But imagine the conversations that we're having today if, Flag is thrown for a pass interference there. The Cardinals got the ball on the two-yard line. And the Bills lose to the Cardinals again in dramatic fashion because the defense couldn't get it done. That this this week of Bills content and fan submissions and fans calling into radio shows would have been absolutely insufferable. And it's kind of the biggest concern I had coming away from this game is feeling like there hasn't been a philosophical shift at all for Sean McDermott. And maybe he'll be able to look at this film and have his growth mindset and be like, damn, we almost we almost blew another one because we couldn't get that one last stop. Maybe this will be some sort of catalyst for change. I have a hard time believing that just because of how many examples we have of him not adjusting that philosophy. So, escape this one. It is what it is for now. Hopefully we win every game by 40 points and we never have to deal with it again. Um, Just to wrap up with a couple special teams notes, Tyler Bass was perfect kicking today, which is cool. Uh, for all the struggles that he's he's had throughout, you know, preseason training camp stuff we were hearing. He has four PATs today, two field goals. I mean, granted, the, the long field goal for the day was 39 yards. So, you know, ones you'd expect him to make. But on a windy day in Buffalo where things were kind of weird, he's perfect on the day. That's all I can really ask for. Good start to the season. Did have the kick that went out of bounds to give the Cardinals the ball at at the 40. That was, you know, again, something that we'll forget about real quick with this win under our belt. But again, that game goes the other way. And we're talking a a lot about Tyler Bass this week. Um, So glad that ends up kind of being a moot point. And the last guy I want to touch on here is Codrington and gets one chance at a at a kickoff return and you know this was this is a guy I knew nothing about, you know, roster cut down day that Bills cut Daquan Hardy. I was kind of devastated by that because I thought you know, he had some poor decisions in there, but I was actually really excited about him as like developing cornerback depth. The Bills get him back to the practice squad, obviously, and make a trade for Codrington. And, you know, he gets his first opportunity to return a kick for the Bills and takes it back 53 yards. So this is uh, this is the type of thing where, again, it's, it's one return. He also had one punt return for seven yards. Uh, this is one of those areas where I, I'm forced to admit that the Bills brass is smarter than me and they went out and got a guy who I really never heard of to come in and he makes an impact with his first opportunity to touch the ball. So I think overall, you know, a lot of a lot of room, like I said, for things to be cleaned up. Uh, a lot of positives from this game that, you know, we could kind of project out and, and be like, this is what it looks like with their first in-game reps together on offense. 
So it it does feel like a game where there was a lot clicking and still, I know we said this so many times last year, still a lot of meat on the bone. If that's kind of the baseline of where we're starting with this team and they can continue trending in the right direction, I think it could be a really exciting team. I have a pretty quick turnaround here with Miami coming up going to be a big game division game early in the season saw Miami also win you know escape uh against Jacksonville with a last second field goal um so one of the teams is going to continue being undefeated and sure hope it's the Bills it's going to do it for today's show I do just want to thank everybody for your support again if you're not already doing it like share subscribe tell a friend Make sure you're checking out the website. We're going to be doing a lot of like quick hitter articles, quick thoughts on the game, you know, quick little one, two paragraph things, easy to read. You can kind of target exactly what, what you want to hear us talking about. Um, If I didn't say so already, tell a friend. It helps us out greatly and kind of keeps the show coming out every week. So make sure you're subscribed so you're not missing any episodes. The Bills are 1-0, and oh, and we will see you next week after the Dolphins game. As always, go Bills.